In the previous video, I demonstrated just how accurate the uh, NSG brightness scale factor is. So, for example, in this graph, the uh, red line represents the PSF uh, flux. And this was the uh, value that uh, PixInsight calculated during uh, calibration. We also have the uh, equivalent measure from uh, NSG, the uh, blue line, which is our uh, scale uh, factor, or uh, sky transparency. And this was um, determined via um, differential uh, stellar photometry. And then finally, I used an external um, photometry uh, program, uh, APT. Uh, this is a program that's uh, actually used by uh, professional uh, astronomers. Um, and we can see that uh, the NSG blue line has a, a very good uh, correlation with the uh, green uh, APT line. So we can have uh, really good confidence that uh, NSG is uh, calculating a, a very accurate um, scale factor. I also went on to show that this was the case even in difficult circumstances. For example, when we have um, significant uh, gradients due to twilight or, or moonlight. And also when we have uh, artificial uh, light pollution reflecting off clouds. But it's now time to show you how to use NSG. And we just need to start by looking at uh, the weighted batch preprocessing script and to uh, have, a, have to see which parameters we can uh, turn off. So we need to go to the uh, pipeline tab on the uh, right hand side. And we can see in the active steps uh, area that we have um, four things uh, checked on by default. So we have uh, subframe weighting. Well, since NSG has its own image weighting, we don't need that. Um, NSG does its own lo local normalization, so we, we don't need that. And finally, when uh, the uh, NSG run has uh, finished and you uh, exit the uh, script, it invokes uh, image integration with uh, the correct settings. So we don't need that either. So we actually only need the uh, image registration. NSG requires registered images. So it's now time to have a look at the uh, NSG script. Now the first thing I'd like to show you is if we click on the, uh, uh, the header area at the uh, top, we get uh, a text field that contains the uh, NSG official uh, website uh, web address. So you can copy and paste that into a web browser. At the bottom of the dialog, we have um, access to the uh, reference uh, documentation. And I'd particularly recommend that you read the prerequisites and the uh, quick start guide. I'd also like to show you a, a feature of uh, PixInsight uh, documentation. You'll see this uh, dialog has some uh, blue text beneath it. And if we mouse over that blue text, the uh, diagram will show the dialog in uh, different, um, uh, under different states. Um, which is really uh, um, quite handy when we uh, come to uh, uh, describe uh, each uh, of those states in, in the help. Now, NSG remembers the uh, settings from the uh, previous uh, run, so you might want to uh, reset the uh, uh, dialog by uh, clicking the reset button at the bottom here. You can also reset individual controls. Uh, many controls now have a, a reset button to their right. And that's particularly important for the gradient smoothness, because earlier versions of uh, NSG used uh, a different default value, uh, whereas the current one is uh, a much better starting point um, for you. So I'd recommend uh, resetting that if you haven't done so already. 
You'll notice that MSG is composed of many sections that can be uh, opened or collapsed. And the way I've arranged this is that if a section needs your attention, it's um, opened um, by default. Whereas if you uh, uh, can safely ignore that section, um, the vast majority of the time, then I'll uh, keep it closed. So, for example, uh, if we were to uh, go into one of these sections and uh, take it off its uh, auto settings, and uh, let's say we uh, change that to uh, um, 30 uh, uh, pixels uh, sample size instead, if we now exit to MSG and then uh, go back in, this time it knows that we need to bring the user's attention to the uh, sample generation section because it's been modified. It's no longer on its auto setting. So we need to bring the uh, user's attention here so that they check, are these fields that I entered last time, are they still correct for my uh, current data set? Well, for now, let's uh, change that back to its uh, auto settings and uh, close the uh, section. The, um, some of the uh, defaults are static defaults that uh, work um, pretty much with uh, all data. Uh, other uh, um, defaults, like the one I was showing you uh, here, and also in the uh, photometry section, they're calculated defaults, which are calculated from your image's um, uh, pixel scale. So it might depend on your telescope's focal length, or pixel size, or the uh, pixel scale. And that way, uh, the defaults that end up being used uh, tend to be very good for uh, all uh, images. Right, so we need to uh, load some uh, target images. So if we click on the Add button, and I'll select uh, all of the uh, images in this uh, folder. And we can see as a sanity check, I display the number of images that the uh, target images table currently contains. So we can check to see whether we've uh, included all the files that we intended to. We can also sort on uh, file name, which can also uh, help for the same reason. But once we've done that, we'll want to sort on the uh, noise column. Um, the reason we do that is that the uh, image with the uh, highest uh, normalized noise, uh, the, uh, uh, in this case, uh, image one, that's likely to be our worst uh, image. Whereas the uh, image with the uh, lowest amount of noise, that's more likely to be our best image. It's not precise. We may well find that our best image is uh, um, anywhere within the, the first few images, and likewise with the worst. But it's a useful guide. And the reason it's useful is very often um, we end up comparing um, one of our target images with the reference image to try and determine what the best uh, settings uh, we should use. So, for example, if we're um, um, determining the, uh, how accurately the uh, gradient uh, correction is going to be, it's worth selecting our worst image and then if our gradient correction works really well for our um, uh, worst image, it's going to be absolutely brilliant for our uh, other images. And we, we select uh, the image that's going to be compared simply by uh, uh, clicking on it with the mouse. You'll notice that the uh, noise column uh, contains the um, name of the algorithm that uh, PixInsight used to um, determine the noise estimate. So in this case, they're all uh, uh, MRS. If the MRS algorithm has insufficient data, it will use uh, a K-sigma algorithm instead as a fallback. But the snag is, I found that those two algorithms are not um, compatible. They'll give different answers for the same image. So what you don't want is a mixture of MRS and uh, K-sigma. And if you find that that's occurring with your data set, 
I'd recommend that you increase your uh, exposure length until you only get uh, MRS uh, noise estimates. Right, so the uh, next step is to uh, choose our reference uh, image. And indeed, the two most critical things uh, when we're using NSG is our choice of our reference image and the uh, gradient smoothness. So because uh, choosing the reference is so important, I'm going to do the next uh, video tutorial on just that. So uh, I hope you'll join me next time. I'll see you then.